All right, guys, <clears throat> here we are in the beginning of episode three, and uh, sorry for the delay between episodes, but um, I originally wanted episode three to be a bit, little bit of a longer episode where we did a little bit more, but um, I'm just trying to get some assets together in terms of images and stuff so that we can move on to the next step, and um, I believe I'm actually first going to be implementing the menu before I implement the game. Um, it's not always necessarily how a game develops, you know, where you get, you know, you actually work from front to back. Sometimes you work from back to front, but um, I find that, you know, uh, it'll get us somewhere that is, uh, is pretty nice because we can kind of play around with the, the uh, you know, with libgdx and stuff like that without really having to have the complications associated with um, developing a game around that. So we're going to start, and episode three I think is going to be a little bit shorter, so let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, first, I think what I'm going to change is um, let's actually get this splash screen kind of in the middle. So um, to do that, we're just going to do splash screw or splash sprite dot with this set x and x is going to be um what is it gdx gdx dot graphics dot get width um minus uh splash sprite dot get width divided by 2. That should be it. Splash uh, sprite dot set y. And then this is just going to be the same thing except we're going to be dealing with height. So um, splash sprite dot get height divided by 2. Alright. Now let's go ahead and run this and see if what I did was correct. It could be completely wrong. So let's let this compile. And I don't know why it's taking a second, but that's all right. Oh, okay. No. That is obviously not right. We set the center to the top right. That is. Okay. Oh, that's why. I think this needs to be... I could be wrong again, but let's give it a shot. There we go. Boom, we've got it in the middle. That was silly. Silly mistakes. All right, and then um, let's do a little bit more with this um, in terms of the tweening. Um, if we want to go to a main menu when this tween is done, we're going to need to know actually when it's finished. And instead of waiting, you know, a certain amount of time, the tween can actually tell us when it's completed. So um, the way we do that is we actually create what's called a tween callback, and we're going to call it CB. You can call it whatever you want, you know. There's a new tween call. Um, and call back. And then on event, we're going to have it called completed. And we'll just put it underneath here and call it um, private void completed. Boom. Oh, whoops. Completed. Actually, you know what? That's not really descriptive enough. Let's call it tween completed. And now that doesn't exist, but... Alright. So, that way it's it's pretty nice and descriptive, and it explains exactly what we need it to do. So, um, then, to tell it that that's what we want it to do, we actually need to um, register it with the tween here. So, um, after this after the ease before the start we're going to put a period and then um, we're going to do what is it called set callback to CB 
I believe. And then um, I can't remember if it needs to be before or after, but let's set callback triggers and um, that'll just be, I, I think we can just do um, between callback dot complete. And um, you can look through those if you want, but uh, complete just tells us to do it um, when it's fully complete. You can have it go um, in between uh, certain, like, uh, I don't know the best word to use, but um, because we're only doing going through it once, but say we did it like this, which I want wanted to do anyway, but uh, let's say we want to do a repeat yo-yo, and we want to do it once, and the delay we'll say is 2.5f. Um, and what a repeat yo-yo does, if we go ahead and run this, we can look, and you see it's going to fade in, and it's going to wait 2.5 seconds, and then it's going to actually fade out. So it could actually tell us when it's when the tween starts, and then uh, when the tween has started the yo-yo, and then when the tween has finished the yo-yo. But we want complete, which is once everything that we've decided is finished. So let's make sure that this is actually getting called by doing uh, gdx.app.log and angry masons.log, sending the message to tween complete. Oops. All right. Now, if we run this, it should, in the console area down here, tell us tween complete once everything is said and done. And there it is, right there. So, um, now, you, in a second, you're going to see why this is so important, and this is going to be a really quick episode. I didn't realize how quick it really was going to be. But um, under screens here, go ahead and create a new class, and let's call this one main menu. And it's going to, um, what's, okay, it's actually going to implement, implements, screen and we're going to have to import that and we're going to get the error that we don't uh, implement all the methods and there we go now um, in the splash screen now we can actually say um, because we, we brought in this game instance this is why it was important for us to do it and the uh, constructor here um, and actually real quick before I get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and create a constructor for this uh, public main menu, and it takes an angry Mason's game. All right, easy enough. Let's go ahead and save that. And we need to import. Whoops. Now save it. All right. Now this is why it was so important because if you come back here, we can actually say game dot set screen to a new main menu and we need to import that I think oh because of the constructor so um, game is what we'll pass to it and that way there it takes the instance we have of the game and with that we set it to a new main menu and actually to test that this is working um, we're actually going to set gdx dot gl dot gl clear color and we're actually let's actually set this to um, white and gdx dot gl dot clear gl clear yeah right goodness gracious I'm Mind is drawing a blank. Yeah, GL clear, and then it takes a GL ten dot GL color buffer bit, which just tells it to actually clear the screen because here we set the the color, but it doesn't actually do it, and this is what actually does it for us. So um, let's go and try this out. Make sure the screen turns white for us once this is done. So there we get our nice little uh, fade in, fade out, and the screen is now white. So, it is working. Um, I think that this is going to be all I'm going to do for this episode. It was a, I apologize for it being a really disorganized video. Um, 
hopefully you pick something up from it. It wasn't really, I don't feel it was that well done. But, um, you know, we figured out how to create a new screen, um, how to change it from the splash screen to the main menu. And then um, we're going to, with the main menu, actually pick up a lot of new things. So, uh, you know, hopefully that works out a whole lot better. I mean, we learned callback triggers with tweens and stuff like that. So I suppose it's a uh, something to learn, but this is just a quick episode. But I'm going to go ahead and actually, as soon as I get done with this video, I'm going to start working on um, the next one where we're actually going to be um, putting some buttons together. And then as soon as we do that, it's on to the game. Um, I promise. We're actually, as soon as after episode four, Episode 5 is going to be dealing with game logic. So, um, yeah, hopefully that actually does a little bit better job of explaining things than this one did. We just didn't really do a lot. It was just kind of setting everything up for the next video, and I'm kind of rambling here. So I'm going to go on and uh, start working on this. So hopefully, if you guys have any questions, just comment. Um, I know I did a really bad job at explaining some of the stuff I did. But, uh, yeah, you ask a question, um, send me a tweet, send me a message, send me whatever, and I will get back to you. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed what we did here, and I will see you later.